you know, I'm an odd man out. Normally, I don't get invited to good programs. They said that the, if you keep the problem away, the problem will not come to you. <laughs> That's the best thing. Uh, and I think I have just taken the average age of this room a little bit up. So, I'm going to talk about oncology. I'm going to talk about something very different. I hope it changes. How does it change? Yeah. This is something I want you to read because it's exceptionally applicable all over our lives. We are experts in creating a problem and then finding a solution. We are amazing at it. Let's see how we do it in healthcare. In uh, 2002, roughly 20 years back, 6.7 million people died of cancer. I'm done. Uh -uh. This is what happens. You know. so 6.7 million people died of cancer. In 2020, it was predicted that around 10.3 million people would be dying unless we do something. And this is a slide from 2000 to 2004. That's when I had just started to go around telling that I'm a cancer surgeon and you know I will do some things for you all. Let's look at what is happening now. In the year 2022, there are 10 million deaths. 10 million is a huge number and of which 20 lakhs are reported, but the actual number is multiplied by three. And that's a huge number that we talk. It's a huge number. Finally, I realized that when I'm growing up, I do certain things. All of us have achieved something. But it's finally for you all, the next generation. The next generation is what is going to take it forward. But if there is no next generation, how are we to survive as a human species? Let's see what we did in the last 20 years. The whole, whole idea is about talking about cancer prevention. And that's a big thing because everybody wants to, to prevent, <laughs> you know, want, don't want to get cancer. And somewhere they do everything wrong. Let's look at this. I think this should be the last generation that smokes or eat gutka. And this gutka, believe me, came during my career. <laughs> I'm sure you must have branded a few of them. And they made a lot of doctors very rich by really killing people. It's unfortunate because suddenly the incidence of head and neck cancer shooted up. And only because of this so-called 50 paisa, one rupee packet, which killed so many people. This. We were technically a poor country with the largest number of obesity surgeries happening in the world. Strange. I do not understand this, but that is the fact. Okay, we have to understand that this model that we are is this car. It's an old Mark I ambassador. That model over the last so many generations has not changed. It has just not changed. Maybe the look changes. What goes in inside this model is what matters. And how you manage this car is what makes it go in a long way. You put in good petrol, you maintain it well, you drive it well. <laughs> I'm sure that you'll have a long way. Otherwise, this is a recipe of disaster. I see some young guys flying around in their bikes and this is what happens. Very unfortunate. But let me see what we have done. Let me talk about technology. Let me talk about AI because nowadays everybody wants to talk about AI. So let's see what this old man has done in AI. I met a friend, a very interesting friend. He stays in Dubai. And then, you know, uh, we said, uh, let's do something in technology. And he had an idea, and he met some Vietnamese doctors. And then he came up. In fact, this app is up and happening. And this is what happened. This is the company. All you had to do is take your phone, click a photograph of your skin, and any skin problem and it will give you a diagnosis. Amazing, isn't it? It will give you a diagnosis. It will give you three or four options. 
you can't rule out the doctor you have to go to the doctor but it serves as a screening mechanism for skin cancers in india skin cancers are not that much but say in australia it is very high lot of people have are exposed to so much of ultraviolet rays that they can get skin cancers simple photograph did the trick simple screening we use the same technology in your oral cavity you got a small ulcer you take a photograph maybe you will get a diagnosis early amazing technology now let's see where this was used we used this in mammography can you see this this mammography is very difficult sometimes you can miss small lesion it's a breast x ray you use ai same technology photographs look into it the tech is going to tell us tell the doctor whether they have missed anything or not amazing ct scans mris that's the way to go that's where ai is taking us all and that's where all of you are here for let's look at this if i'm going to look at pathology slides ai is going to help me if i'm going to miss out on something and that is where technology is helping us and that's a way for future as far as cancer treatment was concerned we had a lot of uh, treatments like surgery chemotherapy radiation hormonal therapy immunotherapy all that is done what what are we dealing with right now today when i talk in the last 20 years have we achieved anything because many people come to us and tell us doctor what is this still people are dying is there anything else that has been done so here we are people are living longer from the 1971s to here people are living longer because of good treatment the biggest mantra still remains is early detection whereas the west is way ahead of us in early detection india is slowly catching pace we received a great boost as far as cancer research goes it's called the moonshot that we got cancer moonshot in 2016 by the obama government and recently by the biden government and this moonshot is all about funding cancer research and this is going to help change things i'll give you an example of how things changed things changed in basic cancer research things changed in immunotherapy in india especially after covid when anybody talks about immunotherapy they talk about you know we have to be fitter we'll take some nice good potions and we'll be good you know you'll put some haldi you'll put some curcumin you have a lot of ayurvedic people selling a lot of things but let's see what we did next slide in our blood cells we have a lot of these b cells and t cells which will attack the viruses these are the t cells and the b cells which will attack these viruses or the bacteria and kill them these are normal immunity that is why i said that we should build should eat well we should exercise that's how we build our immunity we also came to know that these are the type of cells which will also attack cancer cells and that changed and that changed what we did was we empowered we strengthened this t cells to attack the cancer cells and that is what immunotherapy is all about the biggest example biggest example that we can think is jimmy carter i don't know how many of you know jimmy carter long he was long alive much before i was born this guy at the age of 91 got metastatic brain cancer if anybody gets metastatic melanoma they die in a month's time all right at 91 please understand his age he got an experimental medicine which dealt with immunotherapy and in 4 months time he was cured and this we are talking about 2016 he is still alive that's how things changed when it came to immunotherapy I'll give you the next example in the 1970s 1980s lot of things came surgery came chemotherapy came hormonal treatment came in stage 4 lung cancer if anybody in india everybody things get detected late so if anybody had stage 4 lung cancer 
we would say that he would die two months, three months, six months. But now, I have patients who have lived for five years and six years. Just because of immunotherapy, of course a small subset. In rectum cancers, recently one medicine came. A small subset of these patients who had a particular mutation did not need surgery and they were cured. Wow. Amazing from where we came from. It's, it's a different dimension by itself. I, as a surgeon, I'm a surgical oncologist, I've been practicing for a long time, I've been trained for, since 1995. I used to hear huge incisions in the abdomen. Now everybody, you know, and every patient knows about laser surgery or, you know, minimal invasive surgery is what people talk about. I shifted to robotic. And this is one of the robots that we use for surgery. This is pretty interesting, like all the youth gets excited. Oh, robot is gonna do the surgery. What is the doctor gonna do? Oh, please, doctor is still there. I've still not lost my job. <laughs> we use, the robot assists us in visualizing things, in helping us go to deeper cavities, gets precision. It gives us 3D vision. And that is the way robot is assisting us in doing better quality surgeries with better outcomes than before. In this whole exam, sometimes we have to choose what is good, what is bad. It's not necessary that whatever is new is good. Please understand. So when I said the good old haldi is good, yes, it is good. I'm not going to replace it for some tablet which is, comes off the market. But as a doctor, sometimes it's our responsibility to understand what is best for the patient. And please don't insist that everything new is good. It is not, it is not many of the times that can be harmful. Every time we do this, sometimes I feel ki what is the future in surgery? We feel that today, I'm gonna show you a small video about how things are gonna happen. People used to die of fever, kala azar. Today medical technology helps us in living longer, but that's not the only thing. Because life expectancy has doubled. In the future, we are talking about how well we live. It's not about how long we live. That is probably more important. If somebody gets diagnosed of a tumor because of the great screening methodology that we do, somebody gets detected with a tumor, we can take him immediately into the OR, get a biopsy done, and so focused that a small tumor, a 0.5 centimeter tumor, can be biopsied through a small opening and get the results immediately. As soon as we get the result, we take him to the OR, do a good bit of robotic surgery, and that's what we are talking about the recovery. Get it done with. He should be home in two, three days' time, or probably the next day. That would be the best. This is the type of surgical robot that we use. That has helped patients recover from surgery and has avoided them to need for longer hospitalization. We look at things in a very different perspective. We look at quality of the life and what is expected out of it. Today. When I talk to young people, I say about the future. And the future is technology. That is where we talk about. So, so very important. Ha! Ah, this, my dear friend, is a very old man. He lived, he lived many years ago. A very old man. And he became extinct for no fault of his, right? For no fault of his. For no fault of his. At least he can. He had an excuse. He had an excuse that there was a meteorite which came and I did not know. <laughs> it just came. The world traffic. None of us have that excuse. None of us have that excuse because it's in our hands as to what we are going to do for our future. 
for the future of humanity. Sometimes when I talk to young people, I said, this is what you have to do. I sometimes plead and tell them that it's so important, life. We take care of many things. We take care of many things that we can do. Students should dream, should innovate, should inspire and contribute to the world because you are what is going to save this humanity. And please do bring out your best ideas that you can. And please remember my first statement. Don't create a problem and then run to find a solution. Thank you. Thank you.